Hey everybody, so this video is going to cover the introduction to exponential functions and it's basically going to hit the major concepts associated with this topic but then get into a few examples to uh, just clarify the main idea. So let's go ahead and begin. The first thing you need to know about exponential functions is that they are of the form f of x equals a times b to the power of x. What you need to know about a and b is the following. A is your y-intercept, and what you need to remember about a y-intercept, there will always be a zero in the x-coordinate of your y-intercept. So if you simply have a graph pictured, you would look for wherever the graph is crossing the y-axis. That will be your y-intercept. Or if, let's say, you have a table of values where maybe you have an x column and a y column, you would simply be looking for the x value that is zero and then whatever the corresponding y value is. And that will give you the answer for a, your initial value. And uh, another point to make, the uh, concept initial value, when we get into some word problems, that idea will make more sense uh, just to understand how a word problem would show you the y-intercept rather than um, seeing it on a graph or a table. The other part of an exponential function is the variable b, which is your common ratio. And another way to think about b, in, instead of a common ratio, you could think of it as a pattern and a pattern that takes you through all of your y values. So, for example, maybe you would observe in your table that the y values are going to... 4, 8, 16. That would be a pattern of doubling. All of your y values are being multiplied by 2, so 2 would be the value of b. Another example of that would be if you saw 3, 9, 27. This pattern is you're multiplying by 3. And that would be the value of b in that case. It would be 3. And don't think that the numbers just have to get bigger. They could, of course, get smaller. If, let's say, you had uh, 16, 8, 4, 2. Well, that means your pattern is that you're dividing by 2. Or, you want to think of this in terms of multiplication, you are multiplying by 1 half. That would be the uh, correct way to represent that pattern, multiplying by one half. But we'll get to that when we do a few examples. That is the basic idea. You are trying to figure out the value of A, the initial value, or the y-intercept, and then B, your common ratio or your pattern. So let's do a few examples. So, uh, right over here in this example, the first thing we would want to start with is finding the initial value, and the initial value is going to be A. We have a graph and a table representing the same function. We also want to find our common ratio, which is going to be represented by the variable B. So, let's start off by finding that y-intercept A. So the y-intercept a is going to be uh, 0, negative 2, because as we can see on the table, x has a 0 as the second coordinate spot, and the corresponding y value right there is negative 2. And then we can also see on the graph right here that a equals negative 2, and it is crossing the y-axis right there on that red dot. So we know that a is negative 2. To figure out the pattern, though, notice how negative 4 goes to negative 2, negative 2 goes to negative 1. We're looking at the y column right here. What is the pattern of behavior involving multiplication that is going to get negative 4 to become negative 2, negative 2 to become negative 1? Well, if you thought divide by 2, you are correct, because negative 4 divided by 2 is, of course, negative 2. But we do want to think of this as a multiplication situation. What would you multiply negative 4 by to make it negative 2? What would you multiply negative 2 by to make it negative 1? And that answer would be 1 half. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. 
So we are able to now set up our exponential function. The initial value is negative 2, so that is A. It gets written down first. And then the pattern of behavior of the Y values was being cut in half or multiplied by 1 half. So uh, Y equals negative 2 times 1 half to the power of X. That is the exponential equation for this situation. Let's do another one. Suppose you are performing an experiment in science class in which you start with 70 bacteria and the amount of bacteria triples every hour. Write a function f of t to represent the growth of the bacteria over time, t hours, in your science experiment. And then part b, what values for the domain are reasonable in the given context? Well, let's get started. This is a pretty quick problem. Our value of a, the initial value of the problem, is 70 bacteria. It said you start with 70 bacteria, so A is 70. B will be equal to 3 because it says the amount of bacteria triples every hour. So if something is tripling, it is being multiplied by a factor of 3. Putting this all together, the function is supposed to be called f of t. It says that in part A. A is the first value that gets written down. That was 70, so 70 is going to multiply. The common ratio was 3, so that means 3 is going to be raised to the power of t, and we now have our exponential function, 70 times 3 to the power of t. Now, part B, what values for the domain are reasonable in the given context? We should definitely remember that domain is referring to all of your x values or the reasonable inputs. So in this case, we have t as the input variable. We don't have an x in this problem, we have a t. And the domain, in this case, is asking for all of the reasonable inputs what numbers could t be equal to where it would make sense in the context of this problem? And when it says context, we're talking about bacteria tripling every hour in a science class. So let's think. What could t be? Could t be positive numbers? Well, t represents time. In this case, hours. And of course, you could have one hour, two hours, 3.5 hours, t could absolutely be a positive value. Could t be equal to zero? Could no time go by? Well, absolutely. The moment they start the experiment, zero time has gone by, so they start with 70 bacteria. That makes sense. So the only other type of number to consider is if t could be negative. Well, what does t represent again? t represents all the inputs, and those are units of time. Time is not exactly negative. So because time is represented in hours, and time does not move backwards, which is what negative time would imply, we can only say that our values for t are going to have to be greater than or equal to zero. Oh, there's equal to sign. Uh, because time uh, is positive, it moves forward, but it could also be equal to zero at the initial value. So what are the values for the domain that are reasonable? All the values for t that are greater than or equal to zero. Next, next question, in the equation for exponential functions, y equals a times b to the power of x, how does the value of a relate to a key feature of the graph? Well, this is a pretty easy question. Uh, a relating to a key feature of the graph, remember, a is your initial value. But on a graph, it is viewed as the y-intercept. So when you do have a graph drawn and um, it is crossing through the y-axis, you can see in blue right there the y-intercept. It will have a 0 as the x-coordinate. Uh, that is basically just telling you that a is going to be your y-intercept. And the y-intercept is, of course, where the graph crosses the uh, y-axis. So... Um, 
and just a side note to that idea, um, the y-intercept, it's always going to have an x value of zero. You can see that right there. Um, let's remember algebraically what happens when you plug in a, uh, an exponent that is equal to zero. Uh, you should remember that in this case up above, anything to the power of zero is going to be rewritten as the number one. So b to the power of zero just becomes one. And then a times 1 is simply a, which is what you have as your initial value. The, um, the value of b goes away because b to the power of 0 became 1. And 1 times anything is itself. So you're only left with a. At the exact location of the y-intercept, b disappears because it becomes 1. And you're only left with A. That's just the basic kind of uh, deeper theory into you know how all of this sort of works. Alright, um, got a couple more examples here. We have another table and graph um, and we're just trying to write the exponential function. So remember we would want to start with finding our initial value, that is A. We will notice that X is equal to 0 um, and Y is equal to 6 at that location and we do have A uh, right up above at the top of the graph right there as the Y intercept. So A is equal to 6. The common ratio, B. Well, let's look at the pattern here. We have 1.5 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 12. How are those numbers being created by using multiplication? We are doubling. We are multiplying them by 2. So the value for B, our common ratio, is 2. And we can now put it all together in our final answer. Um, y equals 6 times 2 to the power of x. One more example, this is just meant to be kind of a pause the video and see if you can complete the matching exercise sort of thing. We have four functions across the top and we have four blanks right here uh, with some boxes right below where you can fill in which function goes where. Uh, maybe just take a moment, pause the video, see if you can match all of these up and I'll show you the answers in a moment. Okay, uh, so the first graph in the upper left corner, we are noticing that A is negative 1. That's where the y-intercept is occurring. And when we look across the top, the only function that has a value of A as negative 1 is that third one right there. And uh, remember, you don't have to put a negative 1 in front of parentheses. You can always just put a negative sign, and that means the same thing as having a negative 1 written there. Just something to keep in mind. The next function, the upper right corner, the value of a is 4. Only the second uh, function at the top has a value of a is 4. The third one, a is positive 1. That would be the last function that is pictured up top. And then the bottom right from process of elimination, negative 4 is the value of a and that is the function that goes right there. Well, I hope this video helped you understand the basics of exponential functions, and I'll see you next time.